It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I am your host. Glad to be here, and I'm glad that you've joined us this morning. If you're catching us live on America's Voice Now and watching either our video or listening to a stream, outstanding. Glad to have you here. We're talking about guns this morning because they are our only recourse against tyranny. Did you hear what I just said? They are the only recourse against tyranny. You know why? Because tyrants ignore the law. Want proof? Go look at your president. Go look at the Congress. Go look at the state of Connecticut. Go look at the state of New York. Go look at the state of California. Go look at the city of Chicago. They ignore the law. And then they turn around and say, well, the, the, the Constitution is and the Supreme Court are the final arbiters. No, they're not. And they're only the final arbiters in the minds of tyrants when they agree with them. Yet the, Constitu- the, the Supreme Court has come out and repeatedly indicated that the, the city of Chicago has no business restricting the ownership of, uh, and, of guns in that, in that city. Their state Supreme Court said the same thing. Do they care? No. They only follow the strictures of the Supreme Court, whether it's state or federal, when it meets their expectation and their desire. You know why? Because they are inherently lawbreakers. They are liars. They are thieves. They are carpetbaggers, opportunists, and profiteers, politically and financially. Is every politician like that? Well, I don't know. We might be able to find five or eight, maybe ten nationally. The rest of them, have a nice day. It's time for America to recognize exactly how far down the rabbit hole of tyranny we have allowed our nation to fall. In Canada, the Mounties have overridden civilian rule to arbitrarily ban and confiscate weapons. Now, many of you know that in Canada, guns are severely restricted. The RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, have made a determination and have delegated authority to themselves to arbitrarily reclassify and ban and force the confiscation of certain types of rifles that up until now have been legal. In fact, Many of these were actually designed and built to meet the requirements and the specifications that the law placed in terms of limitations. And here's the amazing part. The citizens have no recourse, and the government is afraid or refuses to stop them. They made good on these past threats that they've been making for quite some time now, and they turned tens of thousands of Canadians into criminals overnight. They reclassified this weapon by Swiss Arms called the Classic Green Carbine. It's a, a, a rifle that was um, uh, featured some military-style characteristics, which you know, automatically called it to, caused it to be construed as dangerous. And they declared it prohibited, even though this model has been sold in Canada since 2000. And guess what? They didn't even offer an amnesty. They have turned literally tens of thousands of Canadians into criminals overnight. That can't happen here, you say. The hell it can't. Just happened in New York. Just happened in Connecticut. Just happened in Maryland. It's been happening in California. It's been happening across the country in all 50 states based on 
the National Firearms Act since 1934, based on the 1968 Gun Control Act. You know what the 1968 Gun Control Act is? It's a word-for-word translation from the German Gun Control Act initiated and instituted by none other than Adolf Hitler. Don't believe me? Go look it up. Type into any browser that you can find and say, 1968 Gun Control Act versus Nazi Germany, and go look it up. You will find a word-for-word translation side-by-side. The only thing that's different about our 1968 Gun Control Act and that passed by Hitler with some issues related to switchblades. They allowed them. We don't. We got even more draconian than the Nazis. Go figure, huh? You see, here's the deal. This is really easy to understand. Tyrants don't want you armed because then you are capable of defending yourself and your family and your home and your community and ultimately your nation. The push to ban guns is on globally. In England, you can't own one. And yet, England, and London in particular, has some of the highest murder rates in the Western world. How is that? I mean, if guns can be removed from everyone and we'll all live happily breathing in unicorn flatulence and floating from happy experience to happy experience, how come the world is in such disarray? How come people are oppressed? How come governments are stomping all over their human and civil rights? How come there is a worldwide rising up? And the media is telling you all about what's going on over in Hollywood and the Oscars and Kim Kardashian and her newest boyfriend or clingy skirt. The world's on fire and nobody's telling you. And unless you're listening to alternative media like this, you'll never know. You're being played. You know, this gun in Canada was made, and it was intended to be made, uh, for the purposes of meeting the ban limitations within Canada. On Friday, the country's public safety minister stated that he would, quote, take action against the assault on law-abiding citizens' rights. The Mounties again banned another gun. This is the Canadian version of a, of a weapon called the CZ, uh, made by CZ 858, which was specifically modified to meet the domestic laws. Now, when we're talking about the, um, the uh, Swiss the Swiss carbine, classic green carbine, these rifles cost anywhere from three to 4000 bucks a piece. But they don't care. They have no intention to compensate them, the owners, to purchase them or to reimburse them for these weapons that they're demanding they surrender. If you think surrendering your weapon to a government or a military is going to stop there, you're wrong. Because the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to find that that weapon is being used on you. Maybe not you specifically with your weapon, but mark my words, they will be used on you or your neighbor. The article goes on and says, Troubling to many Canadians is that the RCMP banned these guns without the authority of the elected officials. Quote, the elected government of the day has already made it clear it did not want to go this route. But the Mounties did it anyway. That's right out of the Sun News. It's a dark day, quote, quote, it's a dark day when police, not the people's elected representatives, can suddenly transform thousands of ordinary law-abiding Canadians into criminals with the stroke of a bureaucratic pen. That's right out of the Winnipeg Sun. You see, 
even the news media realizes that this is out of control. <clears throat> There's a comment out there. Quote, the government needs to rein in the Mounties or they will find themselves no longer in control. Isn't that interesting? This is the Sun News. The Sun News is making no bones about it. The Mounties are acting like a dictatorial dicta uh, uh, force against the wishes of the elected. He goes on to say, that means the government not only needs to override the decree from the Mounties, but strip them of any power they have or think they have to do this again. If you refuse to turn in your firearm, you're subject to three years in prison. Amazingly enough, this weapon was made by the Swiss government specifically to meet the requirements of the Canadian gun ban. And kind of funny and ironic because the, gov the Swiss government actually gives these particular weapons without modification, fully automatic, to every citizen to arm themselves. And yet... Switzerland has one of the lowest murder rates in the world per capita. The truth is, America, this is what's coming to you, to your city, your state, your county. It is time for America to stand on its own two feet and say, we have had enough. It's happened in England. It's happened in almost every place in Europe. The people in the Ukraine are defenseless individually. They have an army that can't even muster together enough to fight back against their own government, much less Russia. Why? Well, because their government has stripped them long, long ago of their right to own weapons. Do you think Putin would have the balls to go into the Ukraine? if all of the Ukrainians were armed? I don't. The truth is, an unconstitutional law is void. It has no effect. This is a, an excerpt out of the... Uh, letter that was originally written as the open letter by Mike Vanderbaugh to Connecticut. And he, uh, he excerpts a, um, a speech that was uh, given on the state capitol. It says, quote, an unconstitutional law is void. It has no effect. So says American jurisprudence, the standard legal text. And that's been upheld by centuries of American law. An unconstitutional law is void. Now that is certainly true. But the tricky part is how do we make that point when the local, state, and federal executive and legislative branches, as well as the courts, are in the hands of the domestic enemies of the Constitution? Everyone who is currently trying to take away your rights to arms starts out by saying, I support the Second Amendment. Let me tell you a home truth that we know down in Alabama. Barack Obama supports the Second Amendment just about as much as Adolf Hitler appreciated Jewish culture or Joseph Stalin believed in individual liberty. 
Believe what politicians do, not what they say. Because the lie is the attendant of every evil. Before this year, no one thought that other firearms and related items would ever be banned. But they were. They have been. No one thought that the authorities of your state would pass laws making criminals out of previously law-abiding taxpayers. But they did. If they catch you violating their unconstitutional laws, they will, when they please, send armed men to work their will upon you. And people innocent of any crime, save the one these tyrants created, will die resisting them. The founders knew how to answer such tyranny. When Captain John Parker, one of the 3% of American colonists who actively took the field against the king during the revolution, mustered his Minutemen on Lexington Green, it was in a demonstration of armed civil disobedience. The colonists knew what to do, and they did it, regardless of the risk, regardless of all the king's ministers and all the king's soldiery. They defied the king. They resisted his edicts. They evaded his laws, and they smuggled. Lord above did they smuggle. Now we find ourselves in a similar situation. The new king, Barak, and his minions have determined to disarm us. We must determine to resist them. No one wants a new civil war, except apparently the anti-constitutional tyrants who pass these laws and the media toadies who cheer them on. But one is staring us in the face. Let me repeat that. A civil war is staring us in the face. To think otherwise is to whistle past the graveyard of our own history. We must, if we wish to avoid armed conflict, get this message across to the collectivists who have declared their appetites for our liberty, our property, and our lives. When democracy turns to tyranny, the armed citizen still gets to vote. Just like King George, such people will not care nor modify their behavior by what you say, no matter how loudly or in what numbers you say it. They will only pay attention to what you do. So defy them, resist their laws, evade them, smuggle in what they command you not to have. Only by our acts will they be impressed. Then, if they mean to have a civil war, they will at least have been informed of the unintended consequence of their tyrannical actions. Again, I say, defy, resist, evade, smuggle, if you wish to stay free and to pass down that freedom to your children's children, that you can do no less than become the lawbreakers that they have unconstitutionally made of you. Accept that fact, embrace it, and resolve to be the very best, most successful lawbreaker that you can be. <laughs> that was his statement on the courthouse. It's not the, it's not the end of it, and I will wrap it. By the end of 2013, the state police had received 47,916 applications for assault weapon certificates. Lieutenant Paul Vance confirmed. An additional 2,100 that were incomplete could still come in. That 50,000 figure could be as little as 15% of the rifles classified as assault weapons owned by Connecticut residents according to estimates by people in the industry, including the Newtown-based National Shooting Sports Foundation. No one has anything close to definitive figures, but the most conservative estimates <clears throat> excuse me, place the number of unregistered assault weapons well above 50,000 and perhaps as high as 350,000. And that means of, as of January 1, Connecticut has very likely created tens of thousands of newly minted criminals, perhaps 100,000 people almost certainly at least 20,000, who have broken no other law by owning unregistered guns defined as assault weapons, all of them now committing a Class D felony. You see, 
tyrants seek for you to violate that law. Because once you have violated an unconstitutional law that they have created, then they have placed themselves in the position of now having you completely and totally under, your, under their thumb. You have lost your right to speak out, to vote against them. You have lost your right to defend yourself and your family. And they're banking. They're banking on that tyranny. America, the time has come for you to take a stand and declare that you will not follow these laws, not just on relation to guns. The EPA and their new uh, wood stove law, Obamacare and these tyrannical abuses, You have a right to live your life in a way that you feel is appropriate and valuable. They have no right to dictate the rules to you and force your hand. They have no right to demand that you meet some requirement that they have assigned to you, that you have some format where your life is subject to their whim, why would you willingly place yourself underneath that abusive position? It makes no sense whatsoever. You can continue to ignore the realities of the danger that's at hand. You can continue down that path, but ultimately, you're going to have to make a decision at some point in time whether or not you're going to allow them to continue to abuse you or you're going to force them to cease. It's entirely up to you. How are you going to handle it? You've been listening to America's Voice now. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we're going to talk about the final topic this morning, which is the, Obama new, the Obamacare new delay. And we're going to look at the reality of it because I got to tell you, people, you can classify it any way you want it. But let me tell you what this is. This is treason. Because their only reason they're modifying this is as a, as, as a means to accomplish the re-election of the same tormentors that perpetrated this treason on you in the first place. And now they're going to temporarily lift it until they get back into office again so that they can hit you with the same baseball bat two years from now. Please don't tell me you're foolish enough to fall for that. You've been listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I'm your host. You can email me at mike at americasvoicenow.org. We'll be right back. <laughs> 